There may come a time when you want to let other people into your website to help moderate, uh, write content for you, or even fix something. And you can do all that with roles or contributors. Today I'm going to walk through how that would work for WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix, talk about the various permissions that someone would have, and how to give access to somebody. Let's get started. So what's great about all the major website providers, especially WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix, is that it allows you to let other people with specific, carefully chosen roles into your site to do various things. So you can let people in with very specific permissions about what they can and can't do, and they can help you out with your website. So let's look at the major ones and first kind of get an overview of the major roles that you're looking at. So first, site owner. I like to think of this, it's kind of like owning the laptop that other people are using. So even within the website itself, be it Squarespace or WordPress, you have the ultimate control. Your name is attached to the website and no matter what's going on inside the website, you own it as um, a whole, the entire thing. So specifically WordPress, you could even own the server, anything else. So this is the most top level that you can get for permissions that can override everything. Kind of a fail safe in case someone takes over your admin, I own it, I'm able to fix it. So below that is the admin or administrators. So this is the top level position within the site. So they can do everything. They can add other people, they can add content, they can delete, they can add everything, add plugins. They have complete control of it. They can see uh, payment information that might exist within the website uh, for uh, Squarespace for instance, many things. Uh, editor, uh, and these aren't the exact terms for the individual sites, but it's good to have a bigger picture of it. Editors are people who have access to be able to add content and also moderate content and edit other people's content. So if you have a bunch of contributors, which we'll talk about, adding content into it, your editor would be able to see their content and edit it and then publish it. So they, don't, they can't add plugins or delete or kind of change billing information, but they can moderate all the content and some of the pages that go on within your site generally. And then contributors. So these are kind of the lowest level of the access besides the viewers themselves. So contributors, they can submit content. They This is a blog post that I want to have. They can sometimes add media and that is it. They can edit their own content but they cannot touch anybody else's content. So contributor A cannot edit contributor B's content. So site owner, you're the person who owns the laptop, the server, you're the big person, you're the top. Admin can do anything and everything within the website, including adding others, adding content, everything else. Editor, is they cannot add plugins or any of those kind of site-specific stuff, but they can manage all the content that is submitted from con contributors or authors. And then contributors or authors, they can submit content and they can edit their own content and that's it. So that's kind of like the big picture of the big roles, but let's take a look at each of the major uh, website builders. Specifically, we'll look today at WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix and see how they, the nomenclature for that and the various permissions that you can set. So within WordPress, if you go over to users, if you go to add a new user, you'll see down here you get the role. So subscriber, that is just a viewer. So anybody who comes off the web, they can see the website. The reason for that is if they sign up so they can leave comments or get notification from your newsletter. So subscriber. Contributor is exactly what I just spoke about where this is somebody who can add articles. Uh, they can't upload media often. So if they want to upload a photo, that's not allowed. But they can write articles and they can edit their own articles. They cannot publish an article though. The article has to be published by the editor or the administrator. So if you give somebody a contributor, it's like, yeah, I'd like you to add an article for my site. They can come in, type it up, but then you get to review it before it goes live. Author is exactly the same with two key differences. An author inside WordPress can also add media. So an author can add photos or videos that they'd like to use inside their article, and they can also publish their own posts. So the you as a site owner wouldn't be able to see it before they can just publish it live. So that's the key difference between that. A contributor can't upload media and they can't publish their own post. An author will be able to log into your website, write something, upload some media, and then publish it so it goes live on the web. Next up from that is the editor. And as we discussed, 
that is where not only can they see their own posts and publish posts and edit pages, they can also see everything submitted by contributors and authors and approve it. So they themselves can then um, publish anything submitted from those other people, edit it, delete it, full control over contributors and authors. And then of course, administrator, and that is just everything. This is likely the uh, access role that you have if you install this website. So you can install plugins, you can change core settings, you can uh, deal with add other users, you can edit anything else that anything has been put on the site. So the ultimate control of it. So with WordPress, you are looking at subscriber as the lowest, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. And subscriber really is just your viewers. A very handy uh, diagram that breaks this all down. This actually comes from the WordPress Explained book, which I'll link to in the show notes there as well. But uh, th this is a really handy graphic to kind of get a sense of what the various roles do. So subscriber, right through administrator. So next up, let's hop over to Squarespace, where fortunately they have very much the same type of system where that you can add people to assist you with your website. So if you're editing your website here, uh, even if you're in your if you're in editing mode, you'll just need to get out of editing mode from the top there. So done. And then from the left side here, we're going to go into settings. You're going to go into permissions, and now we can add people. Now, uh, you'll see here there's invite contributor and then a basic author. Contributor has a bunch of options, which we'll discuss in a second. But basic author, this is just if you want to get, almost do like an alias or a, a, some, attribute something to someone else. They have no ability to log in. This isn't creating a user. This is just creating a name that will appear inside your blog or a page, most notably a blog. So this would only be if you want to attribute it to somebody else as opposed to uh, give somebody any access to your website. So if you have a guest article, this is a great choice to keep them kind of outside, but still give them a nod as far as being the author of the content. So that's a basic author. Now, contributor. Actually, real quick, actually, what's useful to see here is you'll see transfer ownership. This is the big site owner that I talked about. So as the site owner of this, you have complete control of it, you know, access to the billing and everything else. Um, when you transfer the ownership to somebody else, if it's a client, that's uh, they become the site owner. So you lose that ultimate, ultimate level of access. Now, if you invite contributor, you'll go ahead and you put in their name, uh, new person, their email. And then you, what's really nice about Squarespace is actually you get to pick and choose a few of what you want them to do. So it's not just limited to one, like WordPress. You can choose a few things for somebody. So you could say you want them to manage your store and also your billing, an example. But let's kind of walk through them really quickly. So administrator, exactly as we said, this is the top within the site. They can do anything and everything within your website. Editor, so they can, you know, just do content. So think of all the words and the images, all that great stuff, but they can't change the main settings of the website. Billing, so this is only to do if you have like an accountant or somebody who manages your finance within your company and you only want them to be touching that and not <laughs> dealing with the site of your website, that's the one for this guy. Scheduling, so if you have a assistant or anyone else who you want to uh, see the setting, uh, the schedules for various things in the site, that's scheduling. Reporting, uh, clearly just you know kind of see how the stats of the sites are doing. Con Comments moderator, useful, especially if you have kind of outside help, if you hired a uh, assistant to just do comments. Trusted commenter, uh, the this particular person has made really great comments and anytime they say something, just let it through. So they're trusted and store managers. So the they'll get notifications, custom orders and edit content on the website. So th that one's a bit more broad in that they can edit many more things across the website as well as anything to do with a store if you have Squarespace's store enabled. So as I said, what's really nice about this is again, if you, let's discard this. If you're in your site's main settings here, you'll come down to uh, permissions, invite contributor. And what's really nice is that you can kind of pick and choose what you want them to do. So somebody in my company is going to handle billing, scheduling, and moderate comments. That's kind of a useful mix of permissions within Squarespace. So very nice there. 
Um, now on this post from Squarespace on their support, this really lays out again very nicely what people are able to do. And I'll link this inside of the post, but it's kind of good to see a visual of what they, somebody can do and can't do. Last but not least, if we get into Wix, we can also see about its roles. So if we go into our particular site, so we're here at the dashboard. So I started at the uh, all listing of my, so if you go back to my sites, here I was at the dashboard for all of my websites. I'm choosing, choosing my own personal site here. And on the left side here, we're gonna go into settings scroll down to the bottom to roles and permissions and here's where they are now much like uh, wordpress you'll first and squarespace you're going to add the person so what is their email address and then you're going to choose their level of access now there's not as many options as the other two versions but again you're going to say what is their email address they are admin with a minor tweak that they can, if you want to let a web developer in with full access or web designer, you can let them in to build the entire site, but you don't want them to have final approval to go live. You can remove that as far as the admin. That's kind of the only minor sub um, permission that you can grant or not grant. Uh, same there with the website manager. We'll get into that. So the back end up, so if you have a administrator, someone else who kind of deals with the analytics and the finances of your site or anything else, back office manager. So you want them to see what's happening with the website, but not be able to actually edit the content or photos. So not let the accountant design the email per se. That would be back office manager. And then website manager. So the that's, again, that might be a better option if you hire a website developer where they're able to edit the site, manage everything, but they don't have any of the other kind of pertinent, kind of sensitive business information. And again, here too, much like the admin, you can remove the ability to publish the website. So this would be a good one to start with if you're bringing in somebody to help you with your Wix site. So not as many options, but still some good ones for you to consider. Now, if you're actually on the website, there's another way to get to that setting. If we can uh, get into the builder. So if we're actually editing the website, we'll have this load. And you click on the site on the top right. So you have your Wix bar at the very top. If you click on site, and from there you should be able to get to the settings and then choose um, through down to the roles and permissions again. So very useful to know. And, and much like the other ones too, on the Wix support site, there is this really useful graphic that describes all the various roles that somebody would be able to do and be able to help you with building your site. So what's really great is as your site begins to build or as your company starts to grow, you're gonna to want to let more people into the site to be able to assist you and all of the major platforms, even the ones I didn't cover in this particular video have those capabilities. So um, one last bit of warning when you are giving people access to your site, start lower down and grant slowly grant them more and more. You never really want to give somebody full access to everything, especially in an administrative role, unless you really know that you can trust them, because once they have that, things can get a little bit hairy. But what's amazing is that you're able to control their access, get people in to help you out, and have your site work and look even better than before. So cheers to a great looking website. We'll see you next time.